better take <laughs>
See how that lifted up? Then you just have to worry about these wires back here. And then this is your, you can see that. Right here you gotta unhook your light. So I got that unhooked. Now we have to look at this. And then there's a friction, a friction clip right here on the front of this. You can pull this little front area up and then you can lift this up and out because it's got a hook on the back. See right here on the back right here you got a hook that hooks underneath your other handle. Then you can get this, this is your window actuator. You can unhook this, okay? Then you can take this wire off. And see now, your whole panel, you can just sit in the back and get it up out of the way so it's not... A lot of room in there if we wanted to put a bigger speaker, I know that. We just gotta figure out how to... These uh, so open up these these rear speakers right here. See what they come with. So we won't be reusing these grills. We actually could. We could just put this whole thing back together and put these grills on there. You know, on top of that door panel. Kind of wanted it to look original though. So here's one of our speakers. We'll take it around there and see what we got. Nice looking speaker, kind of gold, probably never show through there. And then a uh, lot bigger speaker if you compare a lot bigger magnet, these things can handle a lot more RMS power and a whole lot better cone and tweeter there. So we're, we're upgrading here big time. Anyway, as you look at it this way, blue's on the right. I'll get it in over here where I can see it better. Blue's on the right. Our basket that we're going to work on. You can kind of see that. We're basically needing to keep this mounted to here for the only reason of holding our grill. Alright, hey I just wanted to zoom in on this real quick and kind of show you when I got this over there and I'm hoping that this kind of comes in where you can see it. Right by my fingernail there's a little plus and there's a little minus right over here on the other side. So this blue wire is going to be your positive wire so we know how to wire our new speaker i just wanted to show you that um i just need more room for that that bigger magnet on that speaker and we're going to keep this basket as i was saying because we need these outside clips right here to hold the grill on the factory grill i'm going to come in here with a zip bit you know this is a spiral cutting bit and i'm just going to take this off and i'm going to make my way through to this little gap that you see here fill in the gap and cut across to the other gap right um I'm going to fire this up now. I've got safety glasses on, so you're going to protect your, your eyes at all times with this. Um, and then let's see how it cuts this plastic. See if I can adjust this. See if y'all can see it. Alright, so now the back of the basket's cut out so I can put a bigger magnet in here. Um, and I've still got the edge here to hold on to my grill once I put the door panel back on. So I'm probably just going to go ahead and mount this right back down where it was with those three screws. And we'll start seeing what kind of standoffs we need for the speaker. So now, we know we can get the speaker, let's go set that wire in there. We know we can get the speaker to sit flush now. See how that's, put, that's perfect. And then that grill will snap on. So all we need to do now, I just took my screwdriver and I kind of scratched on here. Hopefully you can see that. Right there, that's the little piece of metal I need to take off on each side. And that's so that those those little friction grips of the of the uh, grill, the original factory grill, will go right past this and go into the locking place that they lock into. The other one's right here on top, so it's going to clear fine. And then that way I can mount this with four screws.
going into the sheet metal of the door. And that's how I'm going to do it. All right. Okay, guys, I was going to show you how I clipped this. I just used some of these uh, tin shears, and I clipped a little notch out on, on both of these bottoms. And the reason I did that was because once you get the speaker into this uh, speaker holder for the door, it sits in like this. And if you remember, the grills for the back doors actually fit into these three holes right here and here and here. And so you have to clip a little spot to relieve so that those, that, that grill is going to snap back on here, okay? And I decided to hold that speaker in that speaker holder without a mechanical means. I'm going to hold it with this caulk right here. So this is a pure silicon caulk. It happens to be wide. It's what I had on hand. But I just want to show you. I'm laying a bead right here on this fat part. And you just have to spin this around and just get that bead right on that little exterior circle of this speaker and the reason I'm doing this is because I'll show you I'm gonna put that speaker grill thing back on there and just actually let the caulk and it doesn't matter if you get a little too much because we can pull it off you just don't want to go over into the basket area of the speaker because you'll get on the back of it so once you get this now you gotta remember which way is the top tops up and then when you're looking at this the top two holes are webbed and the bottom one's not. So we're going to lay this on here just like it goes. Like this right here. And I'm looking down and I'm just going to press it right into that caulk bead. Very gently I'm grabbing the front of the speaker now and just squeeze with my thumbs until, see, I'm just sucked down into that caulking bead. Now, believe it or not, when that caulk dries and you can see on the inside, I don't know if y'all can catch it inside in there, there you can see that white bead all the way around. It's kind of nice to have white actually because you can kind of make sure you're seated in it all the way around and then see that's going to just hold it on there and it's still out of the way for these grills right here. So I'm just setting these down. There's the other one right here on this towel so that that tweeter can sink in kind of and just sit there and dry. Alex Plus, it's a 35 year durable acrylic latex silicon cox. So it's actually water soluble, but it's a silicon caulk. And uh, it's supposed to be good stuff. So a bead like that all the way around that speaker, I think is going to hold it fine. I just want to show you what this uh, caulk looked like after I got it dry. This was about 24 hours or so. And um, that caulk I was using goes on white, so you can kind of see it, which is neat. But then it, it dries completely clear. So I'm going to get this in the sun. You can see that clear bead right there under the flange of that speaker this is hard to do with one hand and then but you can see it coming around right there by my thumb that bead and it just goes all the way around and um, got these here in the sun I don't know if they're too bright I mean, I'll come up here where it's not so bright but um, that's gonna hang in there I don't think that that speaker's going anywhere with that complete dried bead around it and then you can also see where I cut those tabs right there so that the grill would still fit on. So now all we got to do, these are the rear ones again. We're going to snap those suckers back into place with those those flanges right there. You can just get a little bit of video. We're pre tinning these. Pretend, let that kind of heat up, and I'll bend them and put them on the speaker. That little thing is working good. What I'm going to do is take these and just bend a little hook in them. Now that they're tinned, they don't fray out. We know that the blue wire, the primary blue wire, is the positive. The thing about soldering on the back of a speaker is you don't want to hold it this way because you drip down. If you drip solder down in this crack, you're going to drip it on your cone or on this little thing and you'll poke a hole in it. So, what I'm doing is I'm hooking that wire. I mean, this is kind of a little bit of a picky thing to have to do, but if you just solder on those little, and then I'm just going to crimp that on that after once I get through the hole. If you solder these on, then you know any bumps or 
off-roading or whatever is not going to allow a clip to come loose on you in here. So now both of those are tight. So now what I need to do is I'm going to reach in here with my soldering iron. Since those are pre-tinned, I'll just touch right in here, add a little solder and we'll be good to go. But I think I'm going to have my cameraman hold the speaker for me, so I'm going to... All right. I just got this stuck to the metal with that big magnet back there, but I wanted to show you. Connor held this while I did the soldering, so um, it took me a little bit. To, I mean, we had to put the camera down to do it, but can you see those soldered on joints now? Everything's good. Then I took my screws back out of these holes, and then I'm just going to set this right back in this here. This gasket right here on the back of the this plastic uh, speaker holder. Um, is still in real good shape. I mean, it didn't tear up. So I'm pushing this speaker back through the hole and then mine my speaker back up and I'm gonna put those holes back in and I should be good. Okay, so then I got those screw in here, screw in here, and the screw down here. And I know this is terrible lighting, but uh, I'm trying to do this in my garage because it's super cold outside right now. And uh, now I'm going to put that cover back, I mean that grill back on, let's see how it does. Okay, there you go. Original factory grill. The brand new speaker behind it, it fit perfect. Alright, go on those. So, <clears throat> this is the passenger side door. And you can see every one of those little yellow clips. There's the speaker grill which on the front is attached to the door panel um, permanently. I mean, you gotta, we're going to have to do some work there to get those little, these are those little clips that when they push onto a, a stem or a shaft, they won't go the other way very easy because they got those spring-loaded little tabs all the way around them. That's what's holding this, this uh, speaker grill on. And to further complicate this, what what uh, Toyota did was you see that little thin pancake speaker this is what came out of there very low profile I mean very low whenever you have this on your door I mean that thing only goes back about an inch from the mounting surface that's it you can see in there that paper in there is just gone but um, this entire speaker was basically a tweeter up front had no base at all and I look from the bottom of this speaker to the bottom of that speaker, it's about an inch and three quarters difference. You can see there. So probably on the outside, on the other side of this door panel, and let it stick through. So at least the thickness of the door panel will help me. And I'm kind of getting further away from the door from the inside of the door on this panel because this panel does sit flat, but the door is recessed right here in this area. So I'm gonna, it's back here a little ways. So if this is in front of that speaker, I'll probably be able to clear the speaker. And as you can see by looking at the backs of both of these, this is a five and a quarter Polk Audio. A lot more, a lot more magnet on it. Probably gonna sound pretty good. I think when these were brand new, that big of a woofer probably sounded nice and gave you the bass you wanted. So it probably was good when it was new. And I'm, I think Rockford Fosgate actually makes a low profile pancake speaker like this, if I'm reading online correctly, that I could probably just replace. But I've had people online also say that they took the Rockford Fosgate speakers out and went with something like this because they couldn't get enough sound out of them. So it's just not a good design for a speaker. This is a better design. It's got a separate tweeter. You can angle that tweeter, by the way. Yeah, I've got tweet uh, turned over a little bit there. You know, one thing I did want to show y'all is if you hadn't started this project yet and you're taking your door panels off These are the little things that you got to pop loose and this door panel is made out of like just a fiberboard So you have to be careful because if you just pull on the, the door panel itself A lot of times what will happen is this thing will just pull right through the fiberboard and you want it to have a nice You know secure that one's been pulled through before and a, Sorry, and that one's been pulled through before and a fiberboard's kind of torn right there. So you have to be careful so the whole thing with this is they wanted to have that big door pocket down here. It goes here for you to put maps in and stuff, gloves or whatever. Because of that, 
they had all this room down here they could have put a big probably a six by nine right here let that magnet sit through here but instead they had to go up higher above that pocket and they had to go right here where there's a this right here is your, your, uh, your glass channel right here and it's that is your limiting uh, point behind that magnet right there but see how this is recessed in so let me grab the tape and I look here you know at the shortest point it's about two inches back from this surface right here two inches from this surface then if we put our door panel back on it's going to give us a quarter inch or so so I'd be about two and a quarter well I think the depth of that new speaker is exactly two and a quarter if I remember right measure it yep it's two and a quarter so my problem is is I'm gonna be right up against that door thing the way it is so I'm gonna make an actual spacer that's gonna go out here just a little black spacer about another quarter inch to three-eighths of an inch that the speakers gonna sit on then the grills gonna sit on so you'll see this black edge right here around that so that's the next thing I'm gonna fabricate All right, what I've got laying here on my bench is some artificial wood. It's by the name of Azek, and it's a trim board that you can get at your big box stores. Um, it comes in three quarter inch uh, width here, and it comes in eight footers, I think, and 16 footers for trim. Now, the good thing about this stuff is it is, it's not uh, absorbent. So it won't swell when it gets wet or moist like wood will. So I'm going to make my rings that are going to help me offset the, uh, the door here. I've got to put a ring that fills in on the door, and I'll show you that in a minute. And then I've got to put another ring on the outside here that goes under the speaker, and then the speaker will mount here on this side of the door. Move that the, the speaker will mount on the outside of the door, but on top of a ring that I'm going to put right here. And the good thing is this is paintable, so I'm going to try to match it up or maybe just paint it black because black behind this, this stock grill, a little, little red ridge of black wouldn't look bad at all. And then uh, what I did was I kind of came in and made, did some measurements. And I figured that if I made two rings, one an inside ring that's going to go in the old speaker relief in the door and fill that in kind of to hold the door panel out, and one to go outside the door panel between the speaker and the or between the speaker and the door panel. I actually could make both of them three eighths of an inch, and get everything accomplished that I needed. How much clearance I could get total, I get two and seven sixteenths, and all I need is two and a quarter. So this is going to leave me three sixteenths clearance, you know, between that back of that speaker and that that window deal. And what I thought I'd do is put a little piece of foam on that window rail just to kind of be there as a cushion in case when the door slams or something you know it, it might span that 3 16 and hit it'll have a cushion so this is my plan so what I've got to do first is mill this wood from th from three quarters of an inch down to three eighths so I've got a powermatic planer it's a 15 inch and I use it you know a couple times a year for something like this when I need to when I need to mill something down um, and this plastic stuff by the way you can cut this whatever this material is it's a plastic slash fiber of some kind you can cut this and mold it and shape it and router it just like wood so you can use all your woodworking bits you can use your uh, your um, planer so I'm gonna hook my planer up I'm gonna take the the wood down to 3 eighths now so that I'm gonna have I don't know what else I'll do with this nice water resistant board so I'm gonna cut it in half and run this side through my planer and get it down to 3 eighths and take this half and just keep it for something later, some other project where I need some waterproof uh, board.
sword right there. Ready to cut my rings. Now, you see these holes right here? You can see them right here. I went on my bench press and the distance from the outside of the bit to the nearest hole is going to cut the center uh, out of each one of these speaker rings. But the distance from the inside of the bit to each one of these holes is going to give me a six and a quarter or a six and a half inch outer diameter on the ring. Now I'm going to cut the outer di diameters first because if I cut the inner one then I can't hold the, the thing still with a center point. For the set for the outer one, so I gotta go outer and work my way in. So these first two circles I have laid out are for my uh, six and a quarter. So I'm gonna use the same drill bit that I drill these holes, and I'm gonna put it through these holes as a peg. tap this out of this hole or probably should cut this hole next there's my circle perfectly cut really nice you know why I have it in this hole I think I'll go ahead and cut my other one there we go cleaned it right up That's nice. Now I can use that center hole to get my outside ring. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is uh, uh, put some double side tape on this because I'm going to cut the inside of this now and this ring right here is going to want to fly off and go crazy once it gets cut around quite a ways. So I'm going to put some double side tape just on the outside edges here to hold this outer ring and then I'll come spin around and cut the inside out. And that was stuck in the table so I thought I'd just start with it. Like that. Tape. Okay, so see now I have tape right there. Sticky on both sides. Yeah, we'll slide this back on my drill bit that we're going to cut the inside diameter now so I'm going to use my inside diameter hole and I'm going to plunge down and start going to those um, screws that hold the speaker on. These holes are very precise and you can see where I marked them and I kind of pointed to them that that's the ones I don't want to touch. Once I get those just right, you don't want to mess with that because those are the ones that are holding that speaker drill. And again, it's like a dowel rod and a hole. It's got to be, be a good fit. 
Now this is my first coat on here. I'm going to do this to try to get this thing kind of ready for sanding. 